about COVID-19. Yeah, it's real, but we don't currently have anything to worry about locally. Mm -hmm. Be patient, wash your hands. It's not as easy to catch, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And uh, then someone snapped their fingers. Yes. Give us an update. Well, I mean, interestingly, just as soon as the show was getting ready to air that we taped, uh, the information was completely different already. So what we're looking at now, and today being uh, Friday the 13th, March 13th, um, again, things could be different by the time we go to air with this episode, but uh, it is far more contagious than originally anticipated and that makes it more what you call virulent, that's, that is contagiousness. And uh, the, the, the fact that it spreads so darn easy is what's making all of the hoopla and why it's been so difficult to contain. Um, more, ch you know, the fact that they've called it a pandemic is largely due to the fact that they haven't been able to contain it properly and that governments have been a little bit slow to react to, uh, to, virus, to the virus, and that's what's causing a lot of the problems they have in Italy, for example. So hope, I, I do feel confident that Canada has been doing a nice bit of you know, a, a more assertive preparation, and you're seeing that now more with schools in BC and Ontario and that sort of thing, and, and everything. Hockey is shut down, and so we're getting a little bit more. Even minor hockey. Like even, even minor hockey. Yeah. My, my boy woke up this morning to learn he has no hockey anymore. <laughs> so, Heartbroken? Uh, no, he's not. He's no all-star, so. <laughs> Or Noah. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of my favorite things about talking to you, Nurse June, is that you're not going to pull any punches. No. You're going to tell the truth about the situation. That's right. So um, let, let's do that now. Let's, let's kind of get down to the heart of the matter. Mm -hmm. Currently, no confirmed cases locally. As of it is currently 12.30 in the day on Friday the 13th, there are mm. no confirmed cases. Has been a fair amount of testing done? It's Correct. 50, 60... Between 50 to 60 tests are now currently in a lab. Okay. So... Statistically speaking, what number of suspected cases would yield a confirmation? I would think any minute now. Yeah. Honestly. And that's just based on how things have transpired in the different hot spots that we've seen. Um, you know, there's been a couple of uh, instances where a new country will have a, their first confirmed case, but they come out with the first case as a death. And that's how Iran came out, for example, and uh, there's a couple of South American countries now, same thing. But that's concerning because the first case that they find should not be the death. It should be, that means that there's probably a, a, a fair number to the order of 200 to 2,000 cases. Undiagnosed. Undiagnosed, correct. So, to say that the first confirmed case is a death is startling. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it, it's easy to misinterpret. Right. Because that doesn't mean that that it's gonna kill you. No, it just means that the testing isn't being done. Exactly. Correct, yeah. And here locally, I'm hearing, and I mean on the uh, the other show that Sam Pico and I do here, like, cause she was in uh, Spain, Germany, so she came back and she went through the testing process. Yep. And she, um, self-quarantined while that was happening to protect everybody that's around. So we had a conversation about it and through her own personal experience and research, she was told, call the public health mm -hmm. office or the nurse or whatever, mm -hmm. and there's a screening process. And if you get through the screening process, which I guess talks about being symptomatic, different types of symptoms, right? and then they'll test you? That's right. So you can't, when I say that they're the, the other, these other areas with the, you know, they're not, they're not reporting until there's a death. I'm also, you have to be careful that you're not just like blanket testing everybody because that's not a prudent way to do it either. There's a responsible way to do the testing. So that's why there are screening questions and to uh, identify if you're at risk. Now, when we start having confirmed cases, that rhetoric may change again because... Yeah, you'll probably expedite the, yeah. Right, yeah, because so it'll be a different animal altogether. And that's, you know, that's, that's the, the nature of the beast when we're talking about a new pathogen. We really, it's changing daily, literally. So what, what kind of questions are in this screening process? So let's just imagine, obviously, I mean, we're not going to get our audience to self-diagnose here. That's not what we, right. so that is not what we're saying. I'm just giving you a heads up as to the way the, co the conversation would go if you made that call to the public health office. What, what, are, what is the process of screening prior to testing like? Right. So you, who you want to call is 811. The nurse line here is doing their darndest 
there's certainly a, in a significant volume of calls being made. A little hypochondria. <coughs> yeah, maybe. there's there's some extra, which you you know you expect, but so be patient. They will get back to you, um, and then you will get the screening questions by a nurse, and they're going to include uh, your travel history. Um, anybody that you've had close contact with, they'll help you understand what close contact means. Because you and I sitting this far apart, if you were to let a sneeze go, we're, you know, I'm not going to get it from you. Probably okay. You're probably I okay. I got powerful sneezes. <laughs> they're that they're way. very loud. <laughs> Actually, into the elbow. Into the That's elbow. That's what you want to do. Not this move. This move's move gross. It is super gross. Yeah. This one. And don't just let her fly either. You got to make, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's my guy. We're there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, no confirmed cases, you're expecting something pretty soon. Just not because you tested somebody, you're like, oh, he definitely got it. It's no. more like, statistically speaking, right. this is the model that has proved accurate everywhere else. Yeah, academically speaking, that's what's, yeah. That, so it should be kind of any day now. Right. Um, or even any hour or minute now. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've already locally shut down organized sporting activity, mm -hmm. both on the professional level and the minor level and everything in between. Correct. From like the little tykes to the pros, the senior, all of it, that's all shut down. Mm -hmm. I mean, school's gotta be soon. I would imagine, you know. Right? So, uh, yes, and I mean, one of the saving graces is that kids aren't getting, don't appear to be getting very ill with the disease. Um, I like so, that you corrected yourself halfway through that and said they don't appear to be. Yeah, because I don't know what's gonna happen. It hasn't been around that long. <laughs> and you were wrong last time. I was super wrong. <laughs> I was not wrong, I was right at the time. <laughs> with all of the information that you had available to you, yeah, you drew right. the correct decision, right? <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. But the little buggers are carriers. But they're vectors. They are what you call it in epidemiology, a vector in that they can carry it to a lot of people and just think about, you know, grandparents, grandparents at home and um, if they're if the grandparents are babysitters, that sort of thing. So I would anticipate that that would be a move that yeah. the government makes. Let's, can we talk about high risk versus low risk? Sure. Both for infection and then for mild to moderate to severe symptoms. Right. So everybody is at risk of being exposed to it. Um, Obviously, event eventually everybody is going to be at risk for being exposed, as in a grocery store or the movie theater or whatever. Um, right now, it is still uh, limited to traveling. Um, having said that, if you have traveled at all outside the province in the last 14 days, there's still a chance that you could develop symptoms because there's a chance you were exposed unknowingly. So that becomes, that's why now the screening question is around when it, you know, have you traveled full stop because they do identify some hotspots, but anybody who's traveled at all, because of, you know, the way yeah. travel is, if you go through Pearson at all, that That's kind right. of thing. You could have been to Montreal and been on a plane with somebody who's on their way home from Ireland. Exactly right. Yeah. So that's what, that's what the screening is now. But in terms of, uh, who's the most at risk for getting sick, it is still uh, anybody with any kind of chronic illness, any kind of pre-existing condition. So like heart disease, respiratory issues, Oh, definitely diabetes. respiratory, for sure, diabetes. Yeah. And I'll tell you, it's going to be interesting the way it unfolds in North America because in Asia, you found that a lot of the older, and, and men were more susceptible to it, but most of the, the, the men far out surpassed the women in who smokes yes. in Asia. Yes, because I read that. So um, smokers in particular, mm -hmm. because there's already a, a, a lack of an lung. immunity and yeah. impaired yeah, capacity. That's right. um, and then so what, you, what we're noticing though as well is that obesity is, seems to be having a impact on your outcomes. So given that North America has much higher rates of obesity versus the Asian countries, I think we're gonna see uh, it play Ooh. out a little bit differently here. That's interesting. Um, we're talking about monitoring symptoms. Right? Mm -hmm. And it started off as sort of like the common cold, or it's kind of like a flu, or it's kind of like, let's, let's just cut to the chase here. Realistically, what are the symptoms that you need to be concerned about? For instance, I have allergies. Mm -hmm. If I go to a client's house mm -hmm. and they have a dog, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be sniffing and sneezing. Yeah, I actually have the same problem. I have a cat and I'm allergic to cats. So <laughs> my first client every day is like, hey, uh, yeah, right, man. Like, How's that corona? Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what what are the symptoms that people need to actually be concerned if they're experiencing them? Yeah. So, fevers, or feeling feverish if you don't have a 
a thermometer. So what's the difference in, in, okay, okay. So feeling feverish just means you don't have a thermometer to guarantee it. Right, okay. and everyone should know what it feels like to be feverish, but it's that super, super cold feeling and, or, or extra hot and then and you're extra clamminess cold. And, yeah, exactly. yeah, okay. Um, so fever. Yep, and a cough, a new cough, or if you already have a chronic cough, an exacerbation of that, so that it so is this a dry? It is a of, dry cough. So if you're like coughing up a mucusy sort of thing, not chances necessarily. are it's more of a, a cough, cold, fluish kind I of thing. I certainly wouldn't rest my hat on that. Yeah. But yeah, it's coming out as more of a dry cough. And the other thing I want to point out there, though, you just made a good point in that. If it's a dry cough, normally I would uh, advise people to take a cough suppressant because it's more just that annoying upper airway, mm -hmm. whatever. But I would be more concerned in, um, in, in this instance of somebody developing a pneumonia secondary to it, which is what we're seeing with COVID. It's, it's, it starts off as a general, just sort of a dry cough, but then it becomes a bilateral pneumonia. Okay. In fact, that's what Wuhan came out with first. We've got these 44 cases of pneumonia, pneumonia that we have we no idea what why. happened. Right, so, so that would, fever, I would not take that. Fever, cough, anything else? No, just a general sort of, yeah. Even just a bit of a sore throat, but fever and cough are the two yeah. big ones. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And shortness of breath, difficulty with catching your breath. Okay, so, well, I mean, that adds up. You're talking about obesity potentially being an issue across North America, mm -hmm. so shortness of breath, I mean, that aligns very well, like pulmonary function and heart, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, June, thank you very much for coming out again. Let's hope the next time we update, it'll be better news. <laughs> yeah. Let's, and, uh, let's hope I'm more uh, accurate this time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to you guys, everyone at home, um, if you got a cough, if you're feeling feverish, make the call first to go through the screening process. You don't necessarily have to out to your doctor or to the hospital. Just make that phone call first. We will be right back after this. All right, girls. Uh, Mom, you said it's played again. Workplace injuries hurt the most at home. Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to an old friend. But when you're saying farewell to your vehicle, Kidney Car makes it fast and easy. Just call or visit our website. We'll take any vehicle in any condition and give you a tax receipt for a minimum of $300. No headaches and no towing charges. It's the one-stop solution for getting rid of your unwanted vehicle in just a few short minutes. When your vehicles reach the end of the road, call us toll-free or visit kidneycar.ca. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Uh, I'm sitting here with Mr. Glenn Stamford, uh, president and co-owner of the Newfoundland Growlers. And um, I guess you got a little bit of a hiatus here now, hey, Glenn? Well, yeah, I mean, hopefully not <laughs> as long as we all think. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, you know, certainly over the last uh, 24 to 40 hours, the, uh, uh, the whole landscape of not only the sporting world, the whole landscape of the globe has, uh, has certainly changed right drastically, yeah. for sure. So for anybody who... Uh, is watching and doesn't know immediately what we're talking about. The ECHL, um, the league that the Growlers play in, has elected amid the whole COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic to suspend their season um, to make sure that, I mean, not that there's a lot of positive testing across the league, but the distribution that's possible from within big sporting events, we're gonna shut everything down, we're gonna wait and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, we are like uh, most of the major league sports, as you're well aware, once the NBA decided earlier this week that they were shutting down, uh, uh, the entire sports world followed yeah. suit. Uh, we are obviously, too, yeah, absolutely. Just... The domino effect was just absolutely incredible. And, uh, you know, obviously we were waiting, um, uh, we were waiting for the NHL to make their decision and then the domino effect to the AHL, yes. to the ECHL happened, uh, happened rapidly. Uh, we had our board of governors call on, uh, on, on Wednesday, on Thursday, and uh, even during the call, as we were obviously discussing, uh, that wasn't going to be a, <laughs> a tough decision where it was obviously unanimous what we were going to do. You know, Kansas were canceling, Duke was canceling, NCAA was canceling, tennis was canceling. So, I mean, the impact that this has had on, 
on the sports world and uh, not only the sports world and business and families across the world is uh, absolutely devastating. I mean, there's local businesses here that as of just the last day or so have decided you all work from home. We're still in operation, work from home. If you can work remotely, work remotely. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's obviously, uh, that's obviously the message, you know, and for, for us in the sports world where we're traveling through airports and we're in arenas and like we're thousands, thousands of thousands, people yeah. and, uh, um, you know, we could very easily become the carriers and then so, um, you know, I mean, it, it was, it's, as I said earlier, you know, it certainly wasn't a tough decision. It was a decision that uh, we obviously all felt was uh, necessary and, and, and the right decision to make. As, uh, as everybody else in the sports world had been doing the last 48 hours. Yeah, and I mean, if you pay attention, like as, as a consumer of the product that you guys sell, because that is, that is sort of what happens, uh, as a constituent in your demographic, um, scrolling through Instagram or Twitter, we'll see uh, a post about how each individual team uh, is saying that they fully support the decision of the league, and I think you you sort of have to say that just from a brand, mm -hmm. you know, PR sort of standpoint. But it's got to also be really true, though. Well, no question. I mean, we're not just coming out and uh, from a <laughs> from a brand perspective or marketing. You say, I mean, it's it's the right thing to do. It's yeah. simply the right thing to do. It's uh, you know, as we said earlier in some earlier interviews. I mean. You know, playing hockey or playing a, a sport now is is pale in comparison to what's going on around the world. When you're yeah. when you're talking about uh, certain countries of the world that you know having thousands of deaths and and tens of thousands of people that are carrying and, it, and it, literally being shut down. You can't come in or leave Italy. No, you can't come you, in. No, or Italy's leave a perfect Ireland. example. So yeah, uh, I mean, this is a world problem, and it's uh, you know it's this it's the you know it's the health and safety. Uh, in our case, of yes. our players, our officials, our employees, our fans, and then you multiply that by all the decisions that have been made over the last 48 hours, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite simply the right thing to do for all of us who made those decisions. Yeah, and it's not so much that, because there are no confirmed cases locally, but, and I can see that, I mean, it's sort of funny the way I was going to word it, all of the fans of the Growlers, home grumbling and growling, that now they don't have the games to go to, and I know the season is suspended, but we don't know how long it'll take. Mm -hmm. There might not be a season, depending on how this goes. Maybe there'll be some augmented playoff sort of thing, but there's no way to know. I think what's important is for people to understand that this isn't about us locally, because how many different cities do your team go to? Yeah, and it's it, you know, and, and, and more so for us, Jason, than probably some of the other teams in our league, because the other teams in our league are busing, and they're confined to their own bus. Yeah, you're not driving. Uh, a bus we're not traveling by street. bus. Uh, we're <laughs> we're traveling through Toronto. We're traveling through Montreal. We're traveling through Boston Airport. So from our perspective, uh, you know, we feel like we're probably even more potential uh, than any other team in our league. Both and, to contract and then distribute. and then to spread. Yeah. So we 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 discuss that from a. Uh, from our own team perspective, like everybody else is busing, we're flying everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, we flew to Toronto, we flew home the other night, and our next road trip, I believe, we're in Adirondack, we're probably flying to Montreal. So, you know, so even though they might say it's a local perspective and uh, uh, there's nothing happening here, well, it's we... It's much bigger we, than It's that. much bigger picture than that. But I, I really found that, you know, with our own fans and through our own Growler Nation fans that we have, uh, you know, people are disappointed. I mean, we're all yes. disappointed. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there, I, I haven't seen anything that, that has been negative from our fans. They're disappointed, um, but they're supportive. But supportive. Very yeah. supportive. And then hoping, as most of the comments have been, hoping that we can get something back on track. We've all made the right decision. Let's see what happens in the next three weeks to a month and then make further decisions yeah. after that. So do you have... Do you have an expectation for how you expect it to play? Like, how, well, let's start with how does this decision get made? Obviously, when uh, that guy on the Utah Jazz got a little bit kind of yep. douchey about touching the mics and everything, and that'll be that's going to chase him for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. And then the NBA shuts down. It's only a matter of time before uh, Major League Baseball and the NHL and I mean Premier League Soccer yep. and the MLS, all of that closes down. You really can't make your decision until those things are done. But I mean. Well, we were a little proactive, and a little proactive. So we saw that on Wednesday night uh, that the NBA had shut down. Um, you know, I think it was later in the evening. Um, uh, I had talked to our coach, John Snowden, earlier in the evening because, of course, rumblings going on of what's, of what potential is happening. Uh, so we were in Brampton. And we had just finished uh, playing Brampton on Tuesday night. And we were scheduled to bus Thursday morning to Kalamazoo. 
And then when I woke up Thursday morning and saw the NBA had canceled, I called John immediately and I said, stay in Brampton until we figure out what's going to happen uh, you know, today, and which yeah. would have been Thursday. And as we mentioned earlier, I mean, the speed, uh, the speed of things that happened on Thursday was just incredible. And, uh, you know, so the NHL didn't have their board meeting until 1 o'clock Eastern on Thursday afternoon. Both ourselves and the American Hockey League had hours at 4.30. Uh, so we obviously made the right decision to keep our team in Brampton and then made uh, and actually got them home, lucky enough to get them home Thursday night uh, to get them back to St. John's because we yeah. were scheduled to come home on Sunday. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so at least got, got our team back, uh, back in Newfoundland. And then, uh, uh, like everybody else, we're kind of just waiting to see what happens over the next 24 to 48 hours as to what might happen for, uh, for any future games or So that for you and all your players and all your coaching staff and anybody who's a part of, like, the travel group, um, you're, you're grounded, you're here now. Um, what, what does this league... Suspension, I guess, technically, right? Yeah. Yes. So what does the suspension dictate as a team you can or cannot do? So you, you can't practice? Yeah, no, we're you like... We're, no team meetings? No team no. meetings, no practices, no gatherings. Um, you know, we're like, you know, most other citizens of Newfoundland right now. And, you know, be smart, uh, stay in your homes and do what we're all doing. Be very careful of... Uh, where you go and yeah. and, and 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 regular hygiene yep. uh, that that we would normally do, which we Wash normally should be doing, heads. which we normally <laughs> should be doing as part of everyday yeah. life. So, uh, yeah. So we yeah, yeah. So we won't be. Uh, there's no practices. There's no gatherings. There's no meetings. Um, yeah. And I just told our coach and our players to uh, to hang tight, uh, and then hopefully in the next 48 hours we'll know exactly what the board of governors will uh, will decide, yeah. um, whether it's a full suspension of the remainder of the season. Whether it's a time you're not frame, that deep into it. Pardon me. Because you're not that deep into the season either, right? Well, we we had 12 games, uh, 12 games remaining. Oh, remaining, yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, so yeah. we're we are deep into yeah, the yeah, season. Yeah. So um, you know, it's probably the reverse. Is, is you know, we only had probably two weeks left. Uh, the season ends, I believe, on April the fourth, uh, April fourth or fifth. Um, yeah. So we'll have some decisions to make, but let's not kid ourselves. Look, we're going to be at, at our level. You know, we're going to be dictated by what the major league guys are doing. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, if they decide that uh, with the medical advice that they are obviously being given, uh, with the medical advice from our parent club, you know, that's what's going to dictate here over the next little while. If the major league guys dictate that, hey, we're done for the year, uh, then you're going to see everybody else follow. I mean, everybody's talking about how the best way to prevent the spread of COVID-19 is the hand washing. So I myself, I play hockey. I'm a goalie. I can't imagine any hockey player who has a problem with keeping their hands washed because it is the grossest, stinkiest part of all of it. Yep. So as far as hockey players in a dressing room spreading that because their hands are dirty, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, yeah, you, you've been around long enough to know, and even in, in not only in a pro environment, uh, I mean, our dressing room, the cleanliness of our dressing room, um, you know, with regards to our uh, training staff and equipment staff, is of the highest priority yeah. before this happened. Yeah, regardless. Uh, that regardless, the hand washing, the cleanliness. But you uh, can't afford your team to get sick. Especially no. you guys versus other teams in ECHL, because you own so many of your players. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, that's so, you know, so I, I, what, we, we were never worried about that from our perspective, going into our dressing room. Uh, with the hand, you know, the hand cleaners, they're all around, not only in washrooms, they're around everywhere. Yeah. And uh, the cleanliness of our dressing room was, uh, was always something that our training staff were very, very yeah. good at. And, uh, and obviously now just had to be just a little bit more conscious of yeah. that. Uh, Glenn, thanks for taking the time to come in. I know you probably got a lot going on since all of this. Really, really appreciate it. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with more on the whole COVID-19 thing uh, in just a little bit. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Welcome back, everyone. Okay, obviously, a lot of updates, a lot of information going out there. Um, I think what's important to remember is that none of this is fear-mongering. Like, there's, no, there's, there's nobody pushing for chaos in the streets. You don't need to go buy all of the toilet paper in the city. Everything is okay. We do not have confirmed cases. If you're feeling feverish, if you have that kind of a cough or labored respiratory issues, like Nurse June was talking about, just call 811. Where have you been in the last 14 days? How long were you there? Who have you been around? How are you feeling? We can handle this. We're good people. We got our heads about us. There's already people who are 
slowing things down and cutting things off. And it's not out of fear, it's out of protecting all of you and all of us. Thank you very much for watching. We're gonna see you guys again next week. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. We're the generation that had it all. We're the generation that had the music and the moves. We're the generation that had a dream. We came together to feed the world's children. We came together to protect them. And in this dangerous world, we have to keep on saving them and protecting them, even when we're gone. If we remember UNICEF in our will, we'll be the generation who left a better world for children. Please visit uniceflegacy.ca. And he can lift anything, anything at all. He's that strong. Joe Schuster, will you stop it or you'll miss your train? Now help me find number five. Strong, but by day he's a mild-mannered reporter. Glasses, you know, a secret identity. Honestly, you Canadian kids. He'd be in this cape. A what? A cape. Wearing the...